Hello to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today's episode will be all about the SR only class. Now I've talked about this class uh, quite a number of times in various episodes and I always refer back to an episode I did on the document outline, which I'll put in the uh, little I at the top of the screen there. Um, and it's kind of buried in that episode. So I kind of want to make an episode where I just, just talk about the SR only class, the pros, the cons, and how do we how do we use it? And, and then I can refer back to this specific episode whenever we talk about it, because we talk about it quite a lot. So what is SR only? So SR only stands for screen reader only. And the idea behind it is that you're, you're creating um, HTML that is specifically meant for screen reader users, hence CSR only, for screen reader users, and for uh, search engine spiders that crawl your website. And you might wanna give these guys um, extra information because they're not as, they're not as um, capable as sighted users from a visual perspective to interpret things. We, from As sighted users, we can interpret things using color or composition and as a screen reader user you don't quite get that level of detail and similarly as a search engine spider you don't get that level of detail so we can create HTML whether it's text images and hide that information that could could look verbose and and sort of unsightly from a visual perspective you we hide it um, without removing its function on the website um, which kind of leads me on to why don't we just use display none or visibility hidden or something like that. So there's a reason why we use a specific class and we'll get into the exact properties that make up that class. But essentially, if you hide something with display none or you hide it with visibility hidden, it actually hides it from search engines and uh, screen reader users. So you're removing that, you're removing the ability for them to be able to read it and understand it um, by using those two properties. So we don't wanna use those, we wanna use a specific set of properties which I'll go into now. So this class can be whatever you want it to be. Um, I've seen it as um, Ali or A11, Y, which is like sh short for accessibility really. There's 11 characters between A and Y and that's why it's called Ali. Um, so I've seen it be, uh, that to be used as the class. You can use whatever you want really, as long as it's, it's helpful for you to understand that whenever this class is being applied to certain elements, it, it hides it off the, off the screen. Uh, we can do it two ways. We can create the code in CSS, which I go to a specific website whenever I want to understand what the CSS properties are, or we can set it up in the in the Webflow kind of property um, property inspector. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll, I'll do a demonstration where you use it in the property inspector. So it's a bit easier for us to um, do if we don't have we, we don't want to write CSS or feel uncomfortable writing the CSS. But alternatively, it's a copy paste job uh, if you wanted to use the CSS. So I always, always, always just Google um, SR, apologies, SR only, always. And normally one of the first things that come up, you can see my stack overflows purple because I've been on it so many times. Um, someone's asked, what is the SR only? They've clearly seen it um, everywhere and they just kind of want to try and um, understand it a bit better. It's actually a bootstrap. So when you use bootstrap, um, for those that don't know what that is, it's a CSS library, so you can use um, their kind of styling. Uh, it kind of speeds up the development process by using a number of um, predefined CSS properties. But they've asked about it, and then someone has kindly broken it up um, here. So what you can see is is that the position is absolute. So if you if, if you watch my episode on um, positioning, then uh, you'll understand a bit about what absolute means, but it, it, it will position it to the closest relative parent. Um, we've given it a width of one, height of one, so it's um, very small, so it's tiny, and with the overflow hidden, it's cropping everything outside of that area, so we're already losing a lot of that um, detail. Padding, um, this is there just, just in case you're using it on an element that's got padding associated with it. 
and we're, we're just making sure that's zero and the margin once again we're just making sure everything's kind of reset border again is just one of those things a cases element with a border that we actually we actually make sure it's zero because that will um, that will be in addition to the width and height. So we just make sure that is there. Clip is a property that we don't get inside of Webflow. So we can um, we clipping is again it's just it's similar to the overflow hidden. We're just doubly making sure that we're we're not showing that um, element. So again, this might be a benefit to adding this this line of code in inside of your um, code editor in Webflow, but we can achieve pretty much we can achieve a pretty good result just using the um, just using the inspector so you can see here that i've got an sr only class there and you know like i say this can be anything you want as long as you're as long as you're you're aware of what it does and you can see that i've made a margin of minus 1 everywhere on the on the um, on the element um, a, a width and a height of one overflow is hidden. The position is is absolute, and that's it. And that's that's oh, there, there's the border actually. There's the border you can see. So I'll apply the border and make sure that it's um, zero. So now, whenever I want to use this class, whenever I want to hide certain uh, pieces of content, I'll use this class. So what kind of pieces of content would you want to um, hide? Well, a, quite a common one um, is form labels. Now, uh, form elements, so text inputs, uh, select boxes, all these things, they need to have a form label. They need to have them, and, and it's, part of the, um, it's part of the HTML spec that if you've got a label, you have a, you have a oh, sorry, if you've got an input, you have a label that is associated with those two things. So, um, but often this this might look a little bit unsightly, or it's part of the design that you don't have those um, those uh, the, the 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 labels are visible. So one of those things is we need to. So you're you're in a bit of a dilemma <clears throat> because you need to respect that uh, you need labels you, uh, with along with form elements, but you also want to respect the design, and that's a prime opportunity to apply an SR only class. Um, on on those field elements so i think we'll quickly create a form just in the footer here just to kind of quickly demonstrate what we're doing so if we add a i think there's a symbol here cool so down the bottom here we have a contact form and uh let's make let's make all the text white so we can just see it a little bit better so in this in this particular case, then we've got these these uh, field uh, label elements next to the field, and and if for whatever reason I don't want those, now I've already created this SR only class, so it's just a case of clicking on the label and then adding that SR only class, and as you can see, it's disappeared. Now you know according to the design, you might want to put a placeholder property on that and just say first name and then then you've got um you've got a placeholder just for sighted users it looks a bit cleaner uh, but then you still have that field element that's 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 giving your your uh, search engine bots the ability to read it and also screen reader users the ability to read it and understand it so another place you might use the sr only class is sectioning the um, content on your website and if you haven't watched my episode on sectioning elements then I suggest you do that but we go into this idea that each page needs to be broken up into sections now the design might not be it might not be clear in the design um, that this is a certain section for example you might have pricing um, you might have a, um, a, a, a a section on your page that's purely to do with pricing and you've got your pricing um, pricing options on, on there. You could add a, a heading, which are, are so important. You could add a heading um, with uh, in that section and hide it with the SR only class to, to, to again, add that kind of section. You're, you're adding that section. You're allowing people to navigate your page in the, uh, to that with sections. But again, because the design doesn't dictate that there's actually an explicit pricing header, you then would hide it using the SR only class. I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily advise doing it that way, but there is there is an opportunity to do that there. 
So on, on this web page, as an example, um, I've got this piece of text here, I wasn't happy with being the H1 of the page. So I created a H1 that I would be far more happy with. And if I just remove the class, you'll see it's brand strategy and design studio for technology companies. And, and, and that is, that is what this website is about. And I would be much happier with those as keywords in there. And again, if you haven't seen my episode on, on headings and key and SEO and keywords, and I suggest you watch that episode as well, or link to it. Headings are very, very important, but I wouldn't want that to kind of, that piece of text to be visible at the top. I wanted something a bit more um, fun and a bit more catchy to be at the top of the page there. So I'm able to write a, a H1, which complies with SEO optimization and for screen readers and then hide it because I'm not so I'm not intruding on on the design aesthetic of the page. Another interesting way you might use the SR only is uh, for instance here um, I've got I've got learn more um, so it might be difficult for screen readers to actually understand what they're learning more about. Now we've got you know without getting too technical right now we've got a H1 near this learn more button so there should be um, some sort of um, understanding that that we're learning more about the subject of this section another important reason why you have sections uh, but you might want to you might want to say learn more about our services to be super explicit um, also because of links they got that um, SEO value you, you could learn more about our branding services or something like that to get branding in as a as a tag or, or as a keyword in the link here so if if we were to learn more about branding um, we could we could actually wrap SR only in a, a ran, wrap branding inside of a span and then apply the SR only class to that and I think you can only do that in link blocks to be fair so this is actually a button but if this was a link block you can wrap elements inside of the um, inside of link blocks. So let's try doing that. Link block. So if I go in here and add a piece of text. Learn more, which is the visible part of what we want to do. Make sure we and then if we add another text block here, uh, make sure we add that space about branding because a screen reader will use will read this link as one, um, one sentence. So we wanna make sure we add that space there. And then we can add that SR only class on, on that last element. So I'll just make that white so we can all see it. There we go. So you've got learn more and then you've got the hidden about branding. So that's, that's another that's another kind of practical but also quite sneaky way of adding further keywords into into the um, into a link. The the other way uh, you can use the SR only class and this this combines with um, another nifty feature you could probably add. I would potentially suggest adding this um, to a separate class. A lot of websites uh, have a navigation and if you're a screen reader user, you might want to you might not want to navigate all the links in your main navigation every single time you land on a page. So often a lot of websites have a link at the top of the page. If I go to let's just try Google and so if I hit tab it will go skip to main content and that will bypass everything that's repeated on every page that can be a bit laborious for them to, to for screen reader users to navigate to. I can click that and it will skip to the first link of the main content of the page. So, and you can see that's disappeared. So what you might wanna do is set all those properties for an SR only class that will again, hide it off the screen for visual users so you can see it right now but then when you're on when you focused on that element which is a common way screen reader users um, use to navigate websites they they navigate using tab when they and and they focus on elements so when the screen reader um, is focused you can then 
bring some of that undo some of that styling that we've um that we've that we've got so you might set auto maybe a bit easier to do this in css but again it's completely possible to do it in the in the property inspector here um but yeah you can you can then when you focus on it you can then bring it back into the view and then when they've defocused on that element then it would then hide it so that's another interesting way you can use the sr only class and bring a bit of interactivity with it as well something slightly tenuous on the subject of this sr only is is actually wanting to show something to visual users but hide it from screen reader users uh, I saw a tutorial that Ran Segal released recently. Um, he does loads of loads of tu cool tutorials on Webflow and doing cr cool things within Webflow. And one of the techniques he's just recently showed, I'll, I'll link to his episode in the description. One technique he showed is having a, um, a filled in text um, have become an outline as you scroll over, as it moves over an image. The way he achieved that was by duplicating that text. Now, and it looks great, it looks really cool. But the problem with that is, is that if you were to view the code, and you can do that on any website, so I'm not gonna do this one, because this is probably, but if you in view page source on any website, you can actually read the code. Um, it looks like they've minimized a lot of their code, so it's a bit harder to read, but, yeah, it looks like they minimized it. But um, what you'd see is a duplication of content in the code. And again, a screen reader user will read that paragraph and then they'll read the same sentence twice. So what you can do is use an attribute and you can apply attributes to any, any piece of text, anything um, in, the, in, the, in the settings, um, element settings tab here. And you wanna add an attribute called aria hyphen hidden and then you make that true and what that will do it will hide that piece of text from screen readers and search engines and it won't read that piece of text twice so you're presenting it to sighted users but then hiding it from screen reader users because as sighted users we won't get confused by that piece of text being shown twice because in this specific um, use case the text is overlapping each other so we so it's almost like it's almost like the roles have been reversed like the sighted users can um, cannot understand the the sort of hidden trick that we're doing here and um, screen readers can so this is this is sort of another way we need to be mindful of the the content we create the HTML that we create and how we might sh show and hide these these things to to um, to users. So that's it. That's my episode on SR only. If you've enjoyed this episode, please show support. Uh, I don't ask for that much because it's kind of weird. But if you have liked this episode, let me know. It's great. Some of the support I get in the in the comments. If you haven't understood anything, you want me to clarify anything, please just let me know. I get back to every single comment. And if there's anything in Webflow that you've sort of been a bit confused about, do let me know. It gives me ideas for episodes, and I'll, I'll try and make an episode of it. So until next time, happy no coding.